Thank you. So Carbon has a really fun, charming and interesting spring season. We start out with two board books. The first is called My Family Haggadah. This is a companion book to our A Family Haggadah 2, which is our popular Haggadah for all families. That book also has a large print edition and this My Family Haggadah is going to be for our, our littlest tiny tots. Um, it has a QR code linking to Songs for a Family Seder. Uh, the artwork is adorable. This is just adorable. Next. This is Mazel Bueno. This is the second book by um, author and singer Sarah Aroeste, who comes from a Sephardic family and is interested in Ladino. This book teaches Ladino words, which is the Sephardic language of the Jews. It's a charming book. Mazel Bueno means, in their, this case, go baby, go. So these are baby milestones, and the parents are celebrating by using Ladino words to celebrate these different milestones in the baby's life. There's a wonderful uh, page plus QR code uh, to Sarah doing a song and it is it's really just wonderful. Next. Uh, we Here we have Moses and the Runaway Lamb by Jacqueline Jules, who has done a number of books for us. This is a very sweet Bible story. Moses has a flock of lambs. The a little one runs away. Moses tries to decide whether it's worth running after this lamb, which is really a lot of trouble, or just let it go because he's got a lot of lambs. He decides to go after the baby lamb and saves it and brings it back to the flock unaware that God has been watching and sees that Moses is going to become a good leader of the Jewish people because he cares about everyone, even the weak. Next. Debbie Song. This is the first of two um, picture book biographies in our season. This is about Debbie Friedman, who really revolutionized the um, Jewish songs. Uh, she used to go to the synagogue, as I did as a kid, and there was a cantor up there singing in Hebrew. Uh, people were falling asleep during services. Debbie figured this was not the way the Jewish world ought to be operating in modern times, and she took her guitar. She is a self-taught guitarist, does not read music and she started to compose songs that included both Hebrew and English. These songs became very popular. She um, was uh, at summer camp. She was a song leader at summer camp and eventually she becomes famous and plays at Carnegie Hall and they have now named the Reform Rabbinical Society Cantorial School after her, which is a big deal. She was a woman who sang liturgy, and that was an enormous thing. And Debbie Friedman is actually from St. Paul. I knew her as a kid. Um, this is a really beautiful book. It has photographs that were submitted by the family, so we can see photos of her as a kid. It is a really lovely book, and I think it will do well. Next. Luis de Torres was a young man during the Spanish Inquisition. He was a convert to Catholicism, also considered a secret Jew. So he converted, but kept his Jewish identity. And when the Inquisition really comes down on the Jewish people, this was 1492, a year you may recognize, he decides that he's going to join um, a group of ships that are sailing for the new world and he will seek his fortune. Before he leaves home, uh, his nephew gives him a silver hamsa, a little like an amulet that he takes with him for good luck. As it turns out, the commander whose ship he is on is Christopher Columbus. Because Columbus is kind of persona non grata the, these days, we only mention that in the back matter. We call him the commander in the, in the story itself. But the ships are getting ready to sail, the Nina the Pinta, the Santa Maria. They are ready to go, but it turns out the day they were planning to sail was Tisha B'Av, which is the most the saddest Jewish holiday of the year. It is a fast day and it is bad luck to begin an adventure like this on Tisha B'Av. So Torres goes to Columbus, to the commander and says, you know, this is really bad luck. We shouldn't be sailing on this day. Columbus poo-poos it, but then he sees that there is a storm kind of coming up and he decides to delay the sailing of the ship. This is based on a true story. Um, the back matter talks about the speculation over all these years um, that there was some that Tushabav may have been the reason why the ships were delayed sailing. There were in fact three Jewish sailors on Columbus's ships um, and there's some interesting back matter about that. So this is a very cool and interesting history. You know, this was a real guy. Next. 
The Rabbi and His Donkey. This is a very charming book, which turned out to have much more gorgeous illustrations than I realized it was going to have. They looked like a fairy tale, but this is a story about Rabbi Maimonides, who was a very famous Jewish philosopher and scholar. And the story here is that Rabbi Maimonides had a donkey and the donkey would take him to the Sultan's palace where he would consult with the Sultan. He was, uh, Maimonides was a physician to the court and he would plod on the donkey and as they walked along he would talk to the donkey and the donkey would listen. Well one day the Sultan sends a beautiful steed to Maimonides and says you know Maimonides you shouldn't be wasting time riding little donkey. I'm going to give you this beautiful horse to ride and it'll give you a lot more time to do important things. So the donkey Hamor is very sad about this. He misses being Maimonides mount and Maimonides takes the horse and he rides back and forth, but in the end he realizes that the horse is so speedy that Maimonides doesn't have any time to think or to formulate his thoughts. So in the end he goes back to riding the donkey so that he can sort of make his ideas known to the donkey and process what he is thinking before writing his books. Um, this book also includes a number of Maimonides famous ideas and philosophies. This is a charming book that will introduce kids to Maimonides who was a famous Jewish philosopher. Next. Uh, this next one is The Blue Glass Heart by Yona McDonough. This is a beautiful story about a family heirloom. Uh, Sarah, a little girl, is fooling around in the house and she breaks her bubbies, her grandmother's beautiful blue glass vase. She's very upset by this, but the grandma says, don't worry, you're much more important than the vase. Nevertheless, Sarah is very upset and as she's sweeping up, she finds a heart-shaped piece of glass left from the vase. She sticks it in her pocket, but when she goes to the beach the next day, she loses it. And this starts a journey of the blue glass heart all around the world. Um, it goes on the ocean, it's picked up by a bird, it goes to different countries all around the world, touching the lives of various Jewish kids in different places until finally and remarkably it finds its way home. We know that, the people in the story don't know that, but it is really beautiful. Ciara Fedele is the um, is the illustrator. She's done a number of books for us. It's really a, a beautiful book. Next. The Bobka Sisters. This is pretty hilarious. This is a story by Leslie Ann Newman, who is very, very well known and prolific in the Jewish world. This is the story about two sisters, Esther and Hester, and their pets, Chester and Lester, and their across the street neighbor, Sylvester. So these Bobka Sisters are interested in making babkas. They are bakers, they are very competitive, and they decide they're gonna have a baking contest and they're gonna see if Sylvester across the street will pick the best babka. And so they take their babkas across the street, Sylvester does the judging and he decides that one of them has made a chocolate babka, that one's the best in the world for chocolate, and the other one has made a cinnamon babka, and that is in the best, that's the best in the world for the cinnamon babka. Uh, the illustrators are two sisters, Tika and Tata. There's a babka recipe at the end. Not so shy. This is a middle grade novel, which is a play on the name Shy, S-H-A-I, which is the, the girl who is the heroine of the story. So 12 year old Shy has come from Israel to live in the United States. She hates it here. She hates everything about living in the United States. She can't understand the language. The kids are mean. She encounters anti-Semitism. She spends a chunk of the book trying to figure out ways to get back. Maybe when her grandparents come to visit from Israel, she can go back with them. She enters a contest for a free plane ticket, she doesn't make it. But in the end, she realizes that there are many wonderful things in the United States. She meets other kids who are also immigrants like she is, and she really settles down and realizes that she can have a wonderful life here and that home is really where the heart is. This is a very nice book, uh, middle grade fiction. Next, nothing could stop her. This is another illustrated middle grade book, uh, Nothing Could Stop Her, The Courageous Life of Ruth Gruber. Ruth Gruber was born in 1911 to American Jewish parents. She became a journalist and activist at a time when women were not doing that sort of thing. Uh, she was a photographer. She wrote stories about what was going on in Nazi Germany. She was in the Soviet Union documenting things that were going on there. A very, very remarkable woman at a time when most women were you know, staying home and being homemakers. Um, there's nice sidebars and you can see some illustrations here. Um, I think this one is going to do very, very well for us. 
Pirate Passover. This is a super cute Passover story. It's pirates, it's kids. So there are pirates on their ship. They're getting ready to celebrate Passover. They're getting the ship ready. But a storm comes up and the matzo balls start rolling off the ships and things start falling apart. And eventually the ship, you know, is brought to a shore and it's Passover and they don't have the stuff for their Seder because it all fell off the ship. So they find a house where there is a Seder going on. They are invited in and they have a Seder with this family. The storm blows over, the moon comes up, and they sail away. Next. And the last book is Duct Tape Purim. It was written by Jill Bloomfield. It's really cute. Um, it's kind of like a maker space thing, um, but I think it will be nice. And we haven't done, you know, a Purim book like this for a while. And that wraps up our season for carbon. So I think it'll be a good one. Thanks.